Greetings and welcome to the channel. Today is going to be another exciting message. Man, there is good things in store for those that are in the house of David. This ministry is going to take off. Today's message is going to be entitled, Before Abraham, I Am. Now, this scripture has confused many of those that are in the Christian church, even those who are Muslim, we all have no idea as into what this is going into. But right here, I have good gospel news in the house of David, and we have the truth of why did Jesus say before Abraham was I am. Now, in order to get started on this message, we have to realize that the teaching of the Christian church is, in fact, way off in left field. Now, they have a teaching that Isaac in Genesis 22 was a picture of Christ. And they are right, but they're wrong. And I'm going to prove to you where they're right at. They're right. It is a picture of Christ because Isaac is spelled I-S-A and prophet Isa is spelled I-S-A. Okay. Minus the A-C. This is still going into the prophet Isa. You call him Jesus. So they're right. This is a picture of Christ. But where they're wrong is they say that Jesus was crucified and Isaac was not sacrificed. That's where they're wrong at. And so this is the traditional teaching of the Christian church. They say the ram goes in place of Isaac. This points to the greater exchange that happened at the cross. The son of God in place of humanity. In Jesus, God brings his own promised son into death and through it, just like God spares Isaac, God spares humanity because he takes the cross on himself. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. Now, the white race of people are very, very smart people. They are. But however, when it comes to spiritual understanding and the doctrine they have of Christ in the Christian church, they suck. And that's just the honest truth. The teachings we have of Christ, all of its theology is break down and its standard principles all came to us from the nation of Esau. That's what my Israelite brothers would say. Or my Arabic brothers would agree that Esau is the Roman Empire and they are white people. But all in all, the teachings we have about Christ all came from the Caucasian race. Now, I'm not racist. I'm just being honest. OK, the white man has done a good job in preserving um, the Bible manuscripts and the things that we have and the dictionaries and all those things. You know, we are thankful for it. They are the main reason we have Bibles today, okay, giving credit to the nation of Israel, of course, because that's where it came from. But when it comes to the teachings of Christ, they are off. And I'm here to tell you that the Billy Grahams of yesterday and all of the theologians of yesteryear all suck. <laughs> they suck. Now, some of what they brought out is true. OK, but most of the teachings about Christ suck and we just have to be honest. Now, here in the house of David, I'm going to show you that the prophet Isa, you call him Jesus, is a picture of Isaac being saved. There you go. Saved from the sacrifice. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. The main source we want to come from is the Quran. Don't be scared of it. It's going to be Quran 
4, 157. And it reads, I love this. I, I absolutely love this passage. It reads, that they said in boasts, that's the Jews, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucify him, but so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety, they killed him not. Quran 4, 157. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the prophet, the true prophet, who told us the truth about what really happened to the prophet Isa. This man was unlearned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the truth on what really happened to the prophet Isa. This is also seen in the gospel of Barnabas. And I believe that the gospel of Barnabas actually is coming from the teachings of the prophet Muhammad because the prophet Muhammad was the first person to tell us plainly that Jesus Christ was not crucified. Now, let's go to the Bible. The Bible tells us that Moses was the only prophet that God spoke plainly to. He only spoke plainly to Moses. Not all the other prophets. All the other prophets spoke in parables. Even Jesus spoke in parables. And they say a lot of things that a lot of people fail to fully interpret. Like, for instance, in Isaiah 53, and this is the foundation of the Christians when they want to go to any passage outside of the New Testament and make the bold claim that Jesus Christ was crucified. They're going to go to Isaiah 53. In Isaiah 53, it speaks of a righteous servant and his soul being made an offering for sin. It didn't say his body. It says his soul. And you will learn later that that is going into how Jesus had to be the cupbearer for Paul. Okay, his soul was made an offering for sin. That's why he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane that this cup would be taken away or removed. This cup is going back to the same cup that was in Pharaoh's hands or in Benjamin's sack. Now that is advanced, but do your research. Do your own studying. Going back to what I said. God only spoke plainly to Moses. So when you're trying to go in the Old Testament and interpret God sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins, you're going to bump your head up against the wall because God Almighty never once said that plainly. He never once said that verbatim. I don't care how many times you try to tell me what Isaiah 53 means Regardless how many times you try to take me to Psalms, regardless how you try to take me to Genesis 22, God never once plainly said that he was going to send Jesus to die for your sins. The only person who says that plainly is the apostate, the self-proclaimed apostle Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing. The only other prophet who says Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world, was John the Baptist, who was a picture of Paul, the man who crucified Christ on biblical record. Other than that, that is seen nowhere else and is spoken of by no one else. The apostate Paul tells you plainly there's no second guessing anything of what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 3. He said Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. You cannot misinterpret that. That is plain. So now going to the foundational passage that is going to be in the book of John. And notice, it's only in the gospel of John. Christians go crazy with John 
858. And it reads, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. He didn't say, I am God. You can't take this and go to Exodus and say, Well, God's name was, I am that I am. Jesus didn't say, I am that I am. He didn't say what Moses was told to go and tell the children of Israel. Who sent you? Jesus simply said, I am. Now, let's read this again. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, that's going into one to two things. First of all, he's telling you, just like Isaac was saved from the sacrifice, so was the son of man. He's trying, he's trying to tell you that just like Isaac was saved, the prophet Esau was saved. Okay? Also, you got to keep in mind, Abraham was the father of many nations. And there's only one man in the entire New Testament who calls himself the father twice. That is in 1 Corinthians 4.15. And that is also in the book of Philma. He calls himself the father. Only one man. Only one man does this. And this is the Apostle Paul. And that is seen in Philmon. And that is seen in Philemon 1 and 10. Okay. He calls himself the father. Paul was a type of Abraham. And Abraham was a type and shadow of the apostate Paul. And so Abraham was a father and Paul was a father. Jesus was a servant of servants. He was a slave of slaves. Now, where is that scene? Let's go to Genesis 17 and 5. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram. Neither shall thy name be any more called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For as a father of many nations have I made you. God made Abraham the father of many nations. He was talking to Abraham. But God was speaking prophetically of the apostate Paul because he adds the word or the name Ham. He added Ham to Abraham. Now, where do we read of Ham at? That's going to be in Genesis 9, 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, and Paul, the father of Jesus, and Paul, the Joseph of Jesus. This explains why Joseph was in the picture because Jesus was a servant of servants. Jesus was a Canaan. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Verse 25, and he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. So Paul was the father of Jesus, just like Joseph was called the father of Jesus. Now the truth of the matter is, Jesus did not have a father. It appeared as though Joseph was his father. It appeared as though Paul was his father. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus had no father, and that is confirmed even in the Quran. When the Quran tells us it is a monstrous thing to say that Allah had a son. He is exalted in might. He is far above having a son. The truth of the matter is, Jesus was the son of none. Just like Joshua was the son of none. N-O-N-E. He had no father. Okay? And this is how Jesus will be a witness against the Christian church. Because Jesus was not a part of the house of Saul. He had nothing to do with the line that Paul perpetrated. Okay, so when you see Joseph in the picture, in the birth of Christ, that is a picture of a man who is claiming to be the father of Jesus. And that man is Paul. He said with his own mouth, 
For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the Gospels. In other words, I have fathered you in the Gospels. Philemon 1 and 10. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus. That's going into the prophet Isa, whom I have begotten, whom I have fathered in my bonds. Okay, this explains why Joseph was in prison. This explains why Joseph was interpreting dreams for Pharaoh. All this is pointing to Paul. So with that being said, we understand that just like Abraham was a father, Paul was the father. And we went over how Ham was added to Abraham's name. Now Ham, his son was cursed. Ham saw his father's nakedness. And this is Paul claiming to be the father. This is the reason why in the Quran, the prophet Muhammad is told that he is not the father of any of his men. And this is the reason why the prophet Isa, Jesus tells us to call no man your father. Paul was the one who committed this huge trespass. He called himself the father. He even says he begotten. Okay. Now only in the Torah. God almighty is the one who begots. And he said I have begotten you Israel. Although you are unmindful of me. God almighty is the true father. He is God almighty all powerful and he alone has the title to be father but there was a man by the name of Paul who came along and called himself the father now this is exactly what David did David killed a man took his wife and made a baby Okay, now this is exactly what Paul did. He stole the father's church and then he made a God out of his creation. And that is the prophet Isa. Man, I get excited and I will go on and on because there's nothing new under the sun. Everything you see today has already been and there is nothing new under the sun the same thing keeps happening over and over and over and over again so you see that Paul was the ham who saw his father's nakedness and another name for Paul was Abraham all right so that's the first reason now let's go into the second reason why did Jesus say before Abraham was I am who was he talking to? He was talking to the Pharisees. Did him and the Pharisees get along? No. Was Paul a Pharisee? Yes. Paul was the son of a Pharisee. So Paul was coming after Jesus. Okay. And remember, he said before Abraham was I am. So he was telling you, look, I'm the real Messiah. Paul is the false Messiah. I came before your father. Now, Jesus called their father Paul. He called their father the devil. Now, let's read John 8, 39 and get some understanding. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. So Jesus is saying, Abraham is not your father. He's not your father. Let's go to verse 42. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. So he's saying, look, Abraham, our patriarch, that's not your real dad. Your real dad is the devil. Now watch this. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. 
Now let's go to verse 56. He says some interesting things. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. He's not talking about the Abraham of the past. He is talking about Paul. Paul was the Abraham. Paul was the one constantly talking about Jesus. He was a Jesus fanatic. He was a Jesus freak. Paul was the one who rejoiced to see his day and he saw it and was glad. Get it? He saw it. He saw. This is Paul. He saw it and was glad. Now watch verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Are thou not yet 50 years old? And has thou seen Abraham? So even though Jesus told them, Abraham is not your father, they still trying to claim Abraham as their father. But Jesus is trying to tell them that the devil in the person of Paul, he is your Abraham. He is your father. He's pointing to Paul. He's telling those Pharisees, look, your father is Paul. Your father is Saul. Your father is the false Abraham. Your father is not the real Abraham. Because there were two religions in the midst of Israel. There was the religion of Islam and there was the religion of Christianity getting ready to be birthed. You got the house of Saul and you have the house of David. Even from the days of old, you had the house of David warring with the house of Saul. What is that? Two religions. That is Islam versus Christianity. Islam, why? Because Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslim and the Muslim only. And house of Saul, why? Because Saul or Paul is the founder, the father of of the Christian church. So Jesus is speaking in parables. He's speaking over your head and he's telling those Pharisees, your daddy is Paul. Okay? That's what he was saying. Okay? Those right there. When you look at the reason why Jesus said before Abraham was I am, he was basically saying, look, just like Isaac was saved, I will be saved. Think about it. His name was Jesus. <laughs> His name means deliverance. His name means rescue. And in the Quran, we are told that Jesus was saved, that Allah raised him to himself. So there you have it. You understand now why Jesus said before Abraham was I am. He was trying to tell you that, look, I'm the real Messiah. Paul is the false Messiah. I am the Esau. And Jacob is the Benjamin, is the Paul grabbing a hold of my heel. Okay, Jesus said, look, watch out for one coming out of the desert, doing signs, wonders and miracles. Paul was doing all the above. He came out of the desert and he told him, beware if he says he's in the secret chambers. And if you go to the Old Testament, you'll see. The first time Chambers is mentioned in the Bible is when Joseph was crying because he seen his brother Benjamin. And that is the same tribe your boy Paul is from. He is the wolf in sheep clothing. He is the Jacob grabbing a hold of his brother heel Esau. Now let's get to how the Christians will be the sacrifice. You know, Paul tried to sacrifice. Jesus Christ but he couldn't Allah took him there was only one thing left for Paul to sacrifice and that was the Christian church this is seen in the story of Jephthah when he had no son notice the Bible is very detailed he had no son to sacrifice in other words he couldn't sacrifice his son Jephthah was a picture of Paul and Paul could not sacrifice Jesus because Allah took him Allah rescued him just like God saved Isaac, when Abraham, a picture of Paul, was going to kill him, okay? So when you look at that and you see that just like God rescued Isaac, he rescued Jesus. And the sacrifice that was left was who? The ram, okay? The ram. Now the ram caught with his horn in the thickets is a picture of Paul and his church, so we've already discussed, and I got to bring you up to speed, 
that Jephthah was a type and shadow of Paul. He couldn't sacrifice his son because he didn't have no son. He claimed to have a son, okay? The apostate Paul claimed to have a son, but in all actuality, he didn't have no son. Allah took him. So what did he sacrifice? He sacrificed his daughter. Did God tell him to do that? No. He sacrificed his daughter, and his daughter did not know a man. Why? Because she didn't know Jesus as the Messiah. And Jesus tells you in the gospel, for those who call him Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay, doing the signs, the wonders, the miracles. He was talking about the apostate Paul and his church. He will say, I never knew you. I never knew you intimately. I never had anything to do with you. Just like Joseph had nothing to do with Potiphar's wife, it was the same with Jesus. He will announce and say, I never knew you. Okay, that is going into Paul in the Christian church. And his daughter was made a burnt offering. She was made a burnt offering. She was made a burnt offering. Wow. That is going into the Christians and the Jews going into hell. And I'm going to read that. Now, this is going to be in the Sahih Muslim, book 36, Hadith number 665. And it reads, throwing of non-believers in hell fire for believers as divine grace and mercy. That's the subtitle, okay? The throwing of the non-believers in hell fire for believers as divine grace grace and mercy think of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego okay the people that threw them in the fire ended up being set on fire and the three Hebrew boys were saved that's what God is going to do for the Muslims so when he took Isaac and he was about to sacrifice him Allah called out to him through the angel and told him don't do it OK, don't do it. He said, I provided for myself a lamb. OK, but then there's a ram caught with his horn in the thicket. And that ram was sacrificed and not the prophet Isaac or Isa. This is the exact same thing that the Quran tells us. What is wrong with you people, man? And let's get Abraham, because I'm not going to let you off the hook that quick. Genesis 22 and 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt or test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, watch this, y'all. Behold, here I am. Here I am. I am. Am I is the same thing. I am. Am I. Watch how many times this is said. This is a metaphor. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering. Now the claving of the wood, I believe, Notice I said, I believe that's going into the cross for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Look, y'all, here, here am I. I told you. Here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire in the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Now, the prophet Isaac was so prophetic. He was saying, hold up. Where are the Christians? <laughs> they about to die. Okay. 
Where are the lambs? Where are the lost sheep? Where are the Jews? They are supposed to be my ransom from the fire. <laughs> but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Genesis 22 and 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So this agrees perfectly with the Hadith that God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian, and he will say, look, this is your ransom, your rescue, your sacrifice, okay? From the fire, they finna go to the fire for you. Oh, I give God all the praises. All praises is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, am. here am I. See, this is a metaphor. The main clause of this verse in scripture, the main clause in this story is, here, I here am. am I. Here am I. And Jesus, the true prophet, he literally says, before Abraham Here was I, I am. am. He was trying to tell y'all, look, I am the Isaac that was saved from the fire. Read about me in the Quran. <laughs> Wake up and read the Quran. Going on. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham, notice you can spell ram, right in Abraham. This is a picture of the Christian church, man. Let me tell you something. This is your ransom from the fire, my fellow brother. This is your ransom from the fire, my fellow sisters. This is your ransom. The Jews and the Christians, don't argue with them. They are your ransom from the fire. God has provided for himself a lamb. And they will go to hell for you. Going on. And he offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. In the place of his son. Now in the gospel of Barnabas. We are told that it was Judas that was sacrificed in the place of Jesus and that Jesus went into heaven alive. Now, the Gnostics, they believe that it was Simon the Cyrene or some other man. Now, you can look all this up and you can study and do your own research. We have people that believe Judas was sacrificed in the place of Jesus. We have people who believe Simon the Cyrene was sacrificed in the place of Jesus since he was carrying his cross. And then when you read in the Gospel of John, it says Jesus carried his cross, which is a contradiction. And then the Gnostics believe that there was some other man that was killed in the place of Christ. And we see this same law all through the Old Testament. If you would read, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, but he was saved. But the people who wanted to kill him, they were thrown in the lion's den. And before they ever touched the ground, the lions break all their bones in pieces. This law has been set up from the beginning, all through Genesis, all through the Bible. Okay, it is called the law of substitution. And we're not talking about Jesus dying for your sins on the cash. No, we're talking about God killing the wicked in the place of the righteous. And I'm going to get another scripture for you. I'm going to get a scripture in the book of the Old Testament. And I believe it's going to be Proverbs. Proverbs 21 and 18. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous. Boom. There you have it. And that was on the fly. That was just right off the dome. 
it says the wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous. This lines up perfectly with the Hadi that I just read. God is going to put the wicked in the fire in the place of the righteous. Now I'm going to read that again. Proverbs 21 and 18. The wicked shall be a ransom, a rescue for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. Now Solomon, that man, that man was a wise man. First of all, the man had enough wisdom out of everybody in the Bible to say he was black, okay, and beautiful, and the sun burnt him. Now, no other prophet in the Bible literally gets on their skin tone. And that's why I truly believe that the Israelites were black, okay? We read about in the Hades that Moses was black, and we read about how Jesus is black, okay? So that's just extra knowledge for those who do not study, and you don't know that Solomon was one of the wisest men on the planet, and he literally tells us exactly what the Hades says, and it says that the wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous wake up now let's do a quick recap abraham was the father of many nations paul also was the father of many nations many churches okay paul surpassed abraham okay think about it this war with islam and christianity is going to be to the end and right now, Christianity is the largest religion on the planet. They have the kingdom. They got so much power. They even helping the Israelis kill the Palestinians. They even helping Ukraine. OK, Christianity is a powerful religion. And the founder of it is the father, Paul. OK, Paul is the Abraham of the Christian church. OK, and the Pharisee's father was not God. Okay, remember, Jesus said, look, Abraham ain't your father. Who was the Pharisee's father? It was Paul. Then we went over how Abraham's name was changed from Abram to Abraham because he was speaking of Paul. Paul was the ham who saw his father's nakedness. Paul was the only man in all of Scripture you can look at every book on planet Earth, every spiritual book. Paul is the only one who said he was the father. He said he was father God. That's a huge, huge trespass. And he has taught the Christians to put creation above the father. Okay, I don't talk the son stuff. Okay, I do not believe Allah has any sons and when I speak of sons I'm always speaking in the sense of God's chosen because even Israel was called his son but that doesn't mean that God had literal sons because God doesn't have a literal wife all right so assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth hold on I got some dessert I got some dessert this is going to be in the book of Luke, Luke 23 and 39. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Now, this is a picture of the two thieves that was right next to Jesus. But the Bible has so many contradictions that in one gospel account in Luke, it's saying that they both was cursing Jesus. Then when we go to Matthew 27 and 38, it reads, then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, thou that destroyest the temples and buildest it in three days, save thyself if thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. So actually what's going on is the people are mocking Jesus. They are mocking him, and now the thieves are beginning to mock Christ. But in the Matthew Gospel account, one of the guys simply says, Hey, you know, we deserved our punishment. But this man 
He's innocent. And Jesus supposedly says, you are going to be with me in paradise. So what is all of that going into? I'm going to tell you what that's going into. In the Quran 262, it reads, indeed, the believers, Jews, Christians, and Sabians, whoever truly believes in Allah in the last day and does good will, will have their reward with their Lord. And there will be no fear for them, nor will they grieve. Now, Allah knows best, and he knows the situations of some Christians, and he knows the Christians who believe in Allah, and they have good works. And in the Quran, it says Allah will save those. Okay, so I truly believe, notice I said I truly believe, that that is going into Christians who really don't know no better, but they have damn good works. I truly believe Allah is the same God of the Bible, and he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. But the Quran also states that those that associate partners with God will have a severe punishment. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.